Hi, in this video we're looking at this concept of limiting and excess reactants. Now don't forget a reactant is an ingredient. It's something on the left side of the equation. Um, and a limiting reactant is something that gets used up first. An excess reactant is something that is left over. So let me kind of show you this visually. Let's say I had this generic equation. A plus B makes AB. Uh, and I've got all these A's and B's on the screen here. Let's say this is in a beaker. Uh, this reaction starts to take place and AB starts being formed, but then it stops right here. And that's because there's no more A to react. I have plenty of B left over. In fact, we'd call this our excess reactant and A would be called the limiting reactant. And reactant A is the limiting reactant because it's used up first and therefore limits how much of the product can be made. So that's what a limiting reactant is. It's a reactant that is completely used up before all of the other reactants in a chemical reaction. Now here's a different way to look at this. Let's say I had two reactants on the left, two products on the right. This is all happening in one container. Um, and I just want to kind of use this little bar graph to show the quantities relative to each other um, of all of these four substances in a beaker. Um, so I start the reaction, I'm producing products, I'm getting rid of reactants because they're turning into products. But it looks like reactant two is reacting at a little bit of a faster rate. And oh, we're done. We're done because reactant two is gone. It's turned into product one and two with uh, some sort of combination with reactant one. That part's irrelevant. What's relevant is the fact that we don't have reactant two anymore. So therefore the reaction has stopped. Even though I have an excess amount of reactant one and I've got plenty of products, we're done. So reactant two is the limiting reactant, and in this case, reactant one would be considered the excess reactant. So let's do an example problem here. This is ammonia reacting with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide and water. And the question says, a two gram sample of ammonia, so two grams of this, is mixed with four grams of oxygen, so four grams of that. And then it asks, which is the limiting reactant? So here's how you do this. Pick a reactant, and it does not matter which reactant you pick. Uh, for this example, I'm going to choose oxygen. You could start with NH3, and you'd be uh, getting the same conclusion of which of these two is the limiting reactant. I'm going to start with oxygen. So you pick a reactant, and then what you want to do is calculate how much of the other reactant is used when all of that mass is used up. So if I have 4 grams of O2, I want to do a mass to mass stoichiometry calculation to figure out what mass of NH3 would react completely with this four grams of O2. So on the bottom, I want the molar mass for oxygen. That's 16 for each oxygen times two is 32 grams of O2. Uh, that's the mass of one mole of O2. So I've canceled out grams of O2. My next stop, if you remember from the mass to mass stoichiometry video, is a molar ratio. So on the bottom, I want to look for the coefficient in front of O2. It's 5. So that means 5 moles of O2 reacts with 4 moles of NH3. So there's my molar ratio. This gets me from moles of one substance to moles of another. And then my final stop is just to use the molar mass of NH3 to figure out what mass uh, of NH3 we're talking about. So a mole of NH3 weighs what? Well, a nitrogen is about 14. A hydrogen's about one, there's three of them, so 14 plus three is 17 grams of NH3. You know, the more precise molar masses you can use, the better your results will be. But to illustrate this, I don't need uh, crazy specific molar masses. Okay, now I'm ready to calculate. So I've got four grams times four times 17 over 32 over five. I'm skipping over the ones because they don't change your math too much. And what I end up with is this. 1.70 grams of NH3 is needed. Well, let's look at how much NH3 is available, two grams. Well, that's more than 1.7 grams, and that's all I need to react all four grams of oxygen. So what that means is NH3 is my excess reactant, and O2 is therefore my limiting reactant. All four grams of O2 will react with only 1.7 grams of the other reactant. There's more of the other reactant there. So that's how I know this is my excess reactant and this is my limiting reactant. Now, a very common follow-up question to this is this. How much of the excess reactant is left over? 
And in this case, all you really have to do is compare the amount of your excess reactant to how much of the excess reactant was needed. Um, I have two grams present. I only need to use 1.7 grams. And so this just becomes 0 0.30 grams left over. Let's do one more question about this. It says, um, how much water can you produce given these reactant quantities? So I had two grams of this and four grams of this, and I was able to determine that this was my limiting reactant, LR for limiting reactant. If it's asking how much of a product you can make, and you're aware of which reactant is the limiting reactant, you wanna calculate how much of the products you can make from the limiting reactant, not from the excess reactant. Here's why. The limiting reactant is gonna run out and limit how much of the products you can make. So you wanna use this mass in this example, four grams of O2, to calculate how much water you can make. So let's just do one more mass to mass stoichiometry problem. Four grams of O2, I'm gonna multiply by the molar mass. In this case, the molar mass is on the bottom, so 32 grams of O2 there, uh, one mole of O2 on the top. It should all look identical to your first setup here. Uh, on the bottom, I want five moles of O2. This is the molar ratio, this fraction here. So five moles of O2 to, in this case, six moles of water. And then the final fraction is the molar mass of water, uh, so that I can so I cancel as I go here. And now I'm in moles of H2O. On the bottom is going to be one mole of H2O. And then the top is going to be the mass of that one mole of H2O, which is what the molar mass is, 18.02. Uh, 18 is probably just fine as well. Okay, so let's do one more calculation. 4 times 6 times 18.02 divided by 32 divided by 5 gives me 2.70 grams of water. What did we just calculate for? Well, the question asked us, given these reactant quantities of 2 grams of this, 4 grams of that, how much water can we make? Uh, and we chose the limiting reactant to do our stoichiometry calculation with because that's what's going to be completely available. All two grams of this is not going to be used up because this four grams of O2 will, will run out. So I want to use the limiting uh, reactant to do this calculation. When I run that through, I get that I can make 2.70 grams of water. So that's it, that's limiting and excess reactants. In some reactions, you'll get a reactant that limits the process. And that means that all the other reactants are in excess, that there's some left over. It's kind of an interesting concept. And maybe the most cost efficient way to set up a chemical reaction is to do the calculations for your reactants in advance so that you're mixing together exactly the right numbers of your reactants so that you don't have a limiting or excess reactant in the end. All you have is product. I hope this helped. Thank you.